Hey, it's your Uncle Herman here, and I'm still an alpha male. If you know anything about the Try Guys, you know that group of BuzzFeed guys that left BuzzFeed to create their own successful YouTube series? I'm sure you know that Ned, the token wife guy who's built his brand on how much he loves his wife, has been kicked out of the group for a cheating scandal where he was exposed for cheating on his wife with a work colleague in what he called a consensual workplace relationship, but what most people call throwing your family and career away. It almost seems that recently we're seeing a lot of people who build their outward persona on how much they love their wife are being uncovered as pretty unreliable slimy men who cheat on their spouses. So let's unpack the curse of the wife guy. But before we do, I would like to thank my sponsor for this video, Vance Global. Vance Global sent me a couple packs of their Delta 8 gummies to try, and I'm pleased to report they not only taste super nice, but also have a really calming effect, which is perfect for my overactive brain reading thousands of articles about Ned Fulmer. I have two codes that you can use for a discount on all of their products. The first code is UNCLE, which will give you 20% off any order on the website that I'll link below. And the second is UNCLE30, which gives you 30% off both initial and renewal subscriptions to get your supply of gummies delivered to your door every month. They really are amazing and I wouldn't recommend them to you if I didn't think so myself. So thank you again to Vance Global for sponsoring this video and I will link the website below along with the products that I would recommend. Ned Fulmer was an intern at BuzzFeed before becoming a video producer and was a prominent figure there during their golden years of success from 2013 to 2017, branded by ex-employees as the most toxic years of the company. Ned has been married to his wife Ariel since 2012 and has built a brand online as the Wife Guy, aka a straight guy who portrays himself as wholesome by constantly talking about how much he loves his wife and posts about her and their children on social media. Hello, Ned's wife. I Love you. <laughs> well, I read it with my wife. <sighs> now to think about my wife. My Examples of wife guys are Ryan Reynolds, John Legend, John Mulaney, pre-divorce, and of course, Ned Fulmer. The good guys, trying to raise standards and be the antithesis to misogynists like Andrew Tate, for example. The wife guy is more often than not on social media a lot, posting about how much they love their wife with cute captions and photos on Instagram to help propel their image. Recently, we've been seeing more and more wife guys have their persona backfire on them, however, and we find out that perhaps they were overcompensating on the gram for what was going on behind the scenes. I'm the one that always talks about his wife and his baby. I'm the quote unquote responsible one, but really, I can be quite irresponsible. You and Ariel are so cute together. Is any of it just for show? Yeah, sure. He's telling the truth. <sighs> Ned was exposed on Reddit when someone saw him kissing his co-worker Alexandria Herring on a night out. This video started circling and before long the Chai Guys released a statement saying that Ned would no longer be a part of the group. Ned Fulmer is no longer working with the Chai Guys. Uh, Ned confirmed the reports and since confirmed that this had been going on for some time which was obviously very shocking to us and we just want you to know that we had no idea this was going on. Uh, all of that information was just as shocking to us as all of this has been for you this week. Ned then issued a statement that read, Family should have always been my priority, but I lost focus and had a consensual workplace relationship. I'm sorry for any pain that my actions may have caused to the guys and the fans, but most of all to Ariel. One response to this read, The hypocrisy of the Ned Fulmer cheating scandal isn't that he made my wife his whole personality, but that he tried to turn his family into a lifestyle brand. The cookbook, the Target partnership, the DIY decorating stuff, making money off of his marriage whilst cheating. People on Reddit have also been sharing stories of meeting Ned on a night out and his inappropriate behavior towards women before the scandal broke out. Someone said, as someone who's met all of them in a club or bar setting, this doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Ned was being really weird towards my friend and trying to get her to dance on him the whole night. Someone asked if they knew when it happened and they said, I just went back to my pictures with them and it was June 2019 during one of their tours. I remember asking Keith if Ned's always like that and he said yes. It was really off-putting and he tried getting us to come to their show in the next city too with backstage passes. Of course anyone can post any story on Reddit and there's no way of verifying it, but it certainly paints a very different picture of the wholesome Try Guy Ned that viewers are used to, if it is true. I find it interesting that he used the words lose focus. 
One comment under a video about the same topic made a really interesting point. They wrote, Men are socialized to consider cheating a male act, an urge that they have to fight to prove their worth as partners, which explains why their apologies almost always contain a reference to losing focus or forgetting what's important. They apologize for letting their natural male urges control their actions. In a way, this also excuses the emotional abuse in their heads because they at least try to be better than most men, but since they're only human, they can't can't win against themselves. Not cheating is treated as a virtue in men because society at large accepts the notion that men are supposed to spread their seeds far and wide. It's not acting on those instincts that is work. So is it true that men are socialized to want to cheat? It's certainly an interesting argument. It could be argued that straight men are conditioned to see cheating as something that's permissible because they're seen as active in relationships and women passive, if not permissible, at least something that they have to control, an urge that's supposed to be there. A 2010 study at the University of Connecticut found that men who were economically dependent on their female partner were much more likely to cheat. Their conclusions pointed to the emasculating effects of this economic relationship, with men straying to feel more masculine. This suggests that cheating is rooted in masculinity, and that sleeping with other women is somehow a masculine thing to do. It seems that when prolific males cheat, it could be to subconsciously feel more masculine. And when you live a lifestyle where you're going to parties and meeting lots of people all the time, there are always opportunities and people telling you that you're amazing. And the more that you see your success as a direct consequence of how amazing and irresistible you are, the more you might think you deserve more and you become entitled to make bad decisions. And let's be honest, men like Ned Fulmer would not get half of the female attention if he was not rich and famous. So perhaps all the female attention that he's getting now is something that he never got before. And thus it strokes his ego and goes straight to his head and other non-logical parts of the body. And let's not forget that we've seen this situation before with Shay Carl, a family vlogger who's often credited as creating the genre, one of the original wife guys and family men who based his whole life about his amazing wife and his family, so much so that they vlogged every day and made their millions that way. And then he ended up cheating on his wife. I'm not perfect, I'm not perfect. I've never said I was perfect. I've fought to stay happy. I still believe that happiness is a choice. I believe that my choices have caused me much unhappiness. And if I will just choose better, I will find joy through good choices. It almost seems like the wife guy persona is a way of alleviating the guilt of what's really going on behind the scenes. Because if you constantly talk about how much you love your wife to everyone around you, she won't doubt it when you tell her that you've been cheating on her with women half her age. One tweet that I think sums it up well reads, This doesn't surprise me at all. People overcompensate all the time in ways displaying a reality of themselves that they want to believe is true but that they don't actually live out in their real lives. We've seen it so many times with male feminists and family men. One article that I'll link below goes on to say that this isn't to say that these wife guys, while they may not be exactly who they portray themselves as online, don't love their spouses. Whether you're a celebrity or someone with at least a semblance of a digital footprint, you're crafting an identity that may not be authentic. But isn't that the nature of the internet? Yes, wife guys can love their wives, but their online persona can also be so closely tied to their businesses and personal brands that they lose themselves in the process. Anyone who's building a following on social media is essentially posting a caricature of themselves. They pick a part of themselves about their personality or about their life and they focus on that and we have to remember social media these days is a big business. It's hard when your business is related to your lifestyle because there's no separation between the two. I think that when those boundaries get blurred that's when a lot of couples kind of lose sight of what's important. So I guess the moral of this story is look out for the wife guys on social media. They might be posting to overcompensate and build a brand around a person that they're cheating on to make them feel better about themselves. I think that anyone who bases their entire social media presence on a spouse or a child really concerns me as it makes me wonder what's going on with them that makes them throw someone else into the spotlight. No family is picture perfect, no matter what Instagram tells you. And in fact, the ones that portray themselves as perfect are likely the ones overcompensating for what's going on behind the scenes. Thank you again to Vance Global for sponsoring this video. If you are interested, please do click the link in the description and I'll remind you of my discount codes down there as well. Thank you for watching. I have as always been your Uncle Herman and I hope to see you very soon.